Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about some of the books I've been reading recently. It's been a while since I've done a video giving an overall review of what I'm reading, so in some cases for these books I'm actually just going to point you to other videos where I've reviewed them in full. Which is just as well, because there's quite a lot of them. Three piles. Before we dig into the reviews though, just two things to say. Firstly, if you'd like written kind of in-depth reviews of all of these books, then go to my Goodreads, where I've also got a list of things that I'm currently reading and I want to read in the future if you want some inspiration. And secondly, if you'd like the sound of any of the books that I talk about in this video, then do go to the description. There are links to the Amazon pages for all the books I talk about. For disclosure, those are affiliate links, so if you do purchase anything from one of those links, then I do get a cut. I would, however, I'd also like to point out that if you have a local bookshop near you, you should be absolutely supporting your local bookshop and trying to find your books there. If you haven't seen them already, I have done whole videos reviewing The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss and A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. One is better than the other, you can watch the videos and find out, links in the description. So first up for this video, The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars by Michael Mann. There are two kinds of people who know who Michael Mann is. There are those people who are advocates for climate change and are passionate about communicating climate change to the public. And then there are the people who don't believe in climate change and that it's all a scam. The reason that both of these groups of people are familiar with Michael Mann is that he produced one of the most iconic figures in the history of climate science, the so-called hockey stick, which shows temperatures over the past thousand years being relatively constant and then shooting up in the late 20th century. So it looks like the long shaft and then the upturned blade of a hockey stick. And possibly no other figure in scientific history has been met with such ire and with such venom from people with, frankly, political and economic interests. Michael Mann wrote this book because he has been at the front line of the climate wars. The coordinated attack on climate science and climate scientists by uh, big coal, big fossil fuel lobby groups and by certain political parties in America that aren't the Democrats. And because he created the hockey stick figure, he arguably has been the figurehead for these campaigns. He's been the person that has been attacked over and over and over again. And it's not just his research, but him as a person. And perhaps this explains why this book is so meticulously referenced. If I hold this up, this much of the book is content, as in, you know, what you would normally call the book, and this much that's all the notes and references. This thing is written to be like a watertight legal document because based on what's happened to him, that's pretty much how he has to write any bit of science now. So the attacks on the climate change movement and specifically on the author form the backbone of the book and that is a strength and a weakness. It's a strength in that it forms a more relatable narrative than I think a lot of other books about climate change. That's this kind of big amorphous concept. This is much more of a personal story. It relates to his place in climate science history. So you can latch onto it. I would say it's a downside though in the later stages of the book where it's basically continued attacks and it's more of a case of this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It's not great storytelling, but it is very good, in my opinion, science communication. This is a book to read if you are interested in anthropogenic climate change and perhaps specifically if you're interested in where the denier movement gets its funding from and where a lot of the more pernicious arguments, for example, like the global cooling argument, where they came from. Uh, I learned a great deal about, in a way, the other side of, of the argument from this. Obviously Michael Mann is very much on the side of anthropogenic climate change being real and being significant, but I learned a lot about how the, uh, the opponents in that debate, the climate skeptics and deniers, think. So definitely worthwhile if you're like me and you think this is something we should be you know, talking about. And also this would be a timely read because uh, the figure, the, the hockey stick figure, just turned this month 20 years old. So. It's, yeah, no better time to pick this one up. Next up, I'm gonna sneak in a section that I put in basically every one of these book review videos, which is my 40K section, because I read Brothers of the Snake by Dan Abnett. I'll keep this one brief because I know that these books aren't for everyone, but I, if you are interested in 40K, if you've heard me talk about it before, if you think I'd like to get into it, maybe I have no idea where to start because there's about a million different titles, I think this is the perfect introduction. It's a, basically a neat little, in a way, it's like a series of, of sort of short stories that are put together into a book, but there is an overall arc, there is an overall narrative. And it's written by the best author in the Black Library, Dan Abner. And specifically the first section, the first one of those short stories, is the best introduction to the the actual universe of 40k not the warfare side of things though that does feature obviously um it's about adeptus astartes that's going to make no sense to most people simon but it does give you a really good high quality look at the background of 40k really great book to start off with if you were interested in actually getting into it 
Next, I'm going to speed review two books because I have reviewed these already, but not on my channel. I was invited to do a video on Book Break, which is Pan Macmillan's YouTube channel about books, to talk about my favourite examples of science writing. And they sent me some examples from their catalogue, and there were some absolute gems in there that I'd not read before. Like I say, I'd reviewed these on their channel, so I'm just going to briefly touch on them here. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot is phenomenal. Very briefly, the book is about a woman called Henrietta Lacks who died of cancer in America in the middle of the 20th century and whose cancerous cells were taken from her body before she died without her consent. And then those cells went on to have a very interesting life in research where they effectively became immortal. They just kept multiplying and multiplying outside of her body. There are three parts to the book. There is the story of Henrietta herself. There's the story of the research and the researchers who worked with her cells. And most interestingly, I think, there's the story of her family. And in a way, actually, there's another one, which is Rebecca Skloot piecing this whole thing together and talking to her family and learning about this tragedy which happened after she passed away because, oh boy, this is... There's some heartbreaking stuff in this book. As I say in my full review, it is an excellent example of using techniques normally found in fiction, some fantastic storytelling techniques in non-fiction, and the book benefits so much from it honestly one of my favourite books that I've read in a very long time. If you're interested in the history of medicine or in ethics, or especially if you are interested in doing, practising medicine, going to university and doing it, essential read. And then secondly, completely different but also exquisite, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. As I say, completely different from The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, this is a book uh, of, comprised of short stories. Again, actually, it's a bit like Brothers of the Snake. I think I may be the first person in history to connect these two books. <laughs> Except in this case, the short stories are patients' stories. So Oliver Sacks was a doctor and he specialised in neurology. And each, the, uh, each of the stories in this book are individual patients with, you know, details changed to protect their identities and things, who had fascinating, from an outsider's perspective at least, fascinating neurological problems. And the titular character is actually, I think, the first chapter, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. It's literally that, a man who was functioning otherwise completely fine, but had no sense of vision. Wasn't blind, but had no sense of what he was looking at. So when he went to leave this consultation with Oliver Sacks, he just went over to his wife and tried to remove her head and put it on his as a hat. Some of the stories in here are, that's one of the best ones, but they're incredible, incredible things. What to me stood out about the book though wasn't so much the patience as the way that Oliver Sacks writes. It is such a breath of fresh air, so refreshing to have a popular science author who doesn't write like every other pop science author but is clearly well read, has read literature, read philosophy and incorporates a sense of style, a sense of flourish in their prose. Like this is just, I think the word that I used in my Goodreads was sumptuous. It is sumptuous to read. I'm going to stop myself now, otherwise I'll ramble forever. These two books were reviewed on Book Break channel, I'll leave a link in the description, but both of these are fantastic, fantastic science communication. I should probably address what may be an elephant in the room to some viewers, which is that in a previous video I talked about doing a book club where we were all going to read a book together, and that book was Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari. And Basically, these books that I've been reviewing for Pan Macmillan have slightly got in the way of this. I've, I read a lot of, of science books that got in the way. I have been making headway in this, not quite there yet, but um, I don't think there are any other distractions coming along the pike that are going to stop me from completing this relatively soon. Huh. Somebody left the entire Gaunt's Ghost series, including the recently released final novel, Anarch, on the floor. I, oh, I should put those down before I reread them. So there will be a standalone video reviewing Homo Deus, which is so far promising. Don't think it's quite as good as Sapiens, but it hasn't gone very speculative yet. So we'll see. But yeah, that's going to be coming in the, in the next one, promise. That then leaves one book to review in this video. The, I'll be honest, slightly disappointing Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Vo Voliben? Voliben. 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 Peter. Now, I say this is disappointing. I think that's actually a bit harsh. Um, I went into this book, heard great things about it. A lot of people recommended it to me. Um, and I can see why people like this. I really can. This is a fractured book about trees. It basically is, is structured into lots and lots of short chapters. If I show you the contents page, that's the first lot of chapters. Are you going to change white balance or 
what? The book's comprised of these pithy little chapters that are based on a particular theme. For example, um, like hibernation, the idea of trees going into hibernation, or the idea of trees um, specialising, or trees being in love. Lots of things which are really interesting. I don't like the way that they were told. <laughs> I kind of have to ask myself, what do I actually look for in a non-fiction book? Are there interesting things in this book? Absolutely yes. Are there things which I'd never even considered before? It's like changing the way that I'm looking at the world. Yeah, definitely. Was it told in an engaging way? Not really. Perhaps it's suffering by comparison to The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. I think in a way this is souring a lot of other books that I'm reading subsequently because this shows how beautifully you can write in non-fiction, write about science. And, you know, in a way they're quite similar again. There's three books in this video which are quite similar. In a way they're quite similar in that they're both formed of short chapters. These are case histories, these are sort of short chapters based around ideas. These feel complete and contain musings, I and mean, after the, they are, you're finished with a chapter, you kind of want to put the book down and think about it for a bit. With this one, I was just impatient to move on to the next chapter because I felt like the momentum was stalling. It was like being on one of those tube trains where you're just constantly kind of being lugged backwards and forwards as you go. Through. There was no sense of flow to this book. Every time I felt like I was kind of getting into it, it the chapter would stop and it would move on to something else. I, I want to like it. I really do want to like it. The stuff in it is interesting, but ah, oh, it's frustrating to read. The best analogy that I can think of for this book is it's like going to a pub and there's an old guy sat at a table and he's had a really interesting life and he'll tell you a story for a couple of minutes. Then, you know, he'll wander off and do something else and then you might prod him again in a few minutes time and he'll tell you another story. The stories are interesting, but just when they get good, he kind of wanders off. And, you know, it's, it's all fragmented. It's, it's all fractured into moments rather than a coherent story. Yes, I know this is non-fiction, it's not a story, but just because something's non-fiction, that doesn't mean you can't have good storytelling. Oh, this is going to be another name of the wind situation. People aren't going to like this. Okay, I'm walking away from that review. That's going to it's going to piss off a lot of people. So, like I say, I'm currently reading Homo Deus and chugging through that. I also have this pile of books, which have been including some presents um, over Christmas, including some uh, the Astronomy Handbook is a reread. The Planets one is a reread. Some of these I've been sent by publishers. This one actually, maybe borrow your language about the, about etymology. I bloody love etymology. I'm, I'm a few chapters into this actually. I've been picking at it. That's really interesting. But yeah, this is getting a bit ridiculous, seeing as I'm also rereading Gaunt's Ghosts. I've got way too many books on the go at the moment. No, so I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to ask you for recommendations because I'm all right for book recommendations. Thank you very much. If you, however, have been reading anything interesting recently, do give a review down in the comments or if you've read any of the books that I've read and you'd like to review them, and especially if you disagree with me, do put that down in the comments. I'm, I'm all, the, the conversation on these book videos is always really enjoyable to me. Certainly a lot more enjoyable than the conversations on the climate change videos. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the sound of any of the books, do check out the links in the description. If you enjoyed the video, then do pop it a like or subscribe if you're not already. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.